Uh, thank you for agreeing to do this interview. Could you tell us a little bit about the paper you are presenting at this conference? Sure, gladly. Um, I'm, what I'm presenting is actually uh, work I've done together with sociologist Elżbieta Korolczuk, who um, is based uh, in Sweden but working in Poland. And we're researching this together, which is important because it's partly participatory observation. What we're looking at is the Polish variant of the war on gender, mm -hmm. uh, which is happening in many European countries. Um, but we're trying to, to link together various perspectives. Now, just to start with, the, the right-wing war on gender is a new version of anti-feminist backlash, which uses uh, quite um, uh, persistently the word gender to mean a variety oh, of yes. things that are uh, evil, um, dangerous to children, uh, sexually devious, possibly related to um, transnational uh, corporations, the UN, the World Health Organization, and in some versions of this uh, media campaign, um, which is really a smear campaign, um, also j linked to, to Jewishness. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, initially we were looking at the Polish variant because Poland is interesting in that in, in Poland it, it was extremely intensive. Mm -hmm. uh, it was all over the media um, and it probably, we believe, we, we argue that it, it was a very significant contribution to the political success of the extreme right or the almost extreme right, mm -hmm. the peace right, um, in 2015. The, the, the previous two years were uh, filled with uh, the, the word gender addressed as at anyone who they thought as liberal. Um, but what we're really interested in is the transnational connection because mm -hmm. um, uh, as we entered this group of scholars uh, who were working together and meeting in Brussels, we realized that um, it's happening in, in France, in Italy, um, in Russia in very intensive ways, uh, in Croatia, and it, it takes different forms. There are different emphasis. For instance, Poland's anti-genderism is uh, particularly obsessed with abortion, and mm -hmm. uh, French anti-genderism is more interested in gay marriage, and, and it, w it was a very important stream of the um, uh, of the Manif Portus movement. Mm -hmm. But what connects them is this general idea of Western history as having been corrupted by what they call genderism. And we, in this uh, article, which will be published, it has been accepted for science, so in a few months it'll, you, you can read it as a whole. Um, we're trying to reconstruct their way of thinking. In other words, our point is not to argue against genderism. That would mm -hmm. be absurd because mm -hmm. it's really based on a whole sequence of misconception, but rather to reconstruct it as a worldview and to show its power um, as, a, as the new language of the transnational right. And what we argue, um, and I think this is where our contribution is new, is that the central point which makes it possible for right-wing fundamentalists in the United States in Poland, in Russia, um, uh, to communicate very well and to link uh, their work with nationalists in these various locations is what we call the anti-colonial frame. Mm -hmm. Now, the way it works, very briefly, um, is that, and the Pope has been saying this quite repeatedly in recent months, uh, is the idea that gender is a form of colonization of the West, I mean, of the West colonizing the rest of the world, but also of the West having been colonized in the past by Marxism. So it's this idea of this this rather vague and diffuse force called gender, mm -hmm. which has been spreading and which needs to be stopped. The people who are being defended against gender are ordinary people, the folk, one might say. In Poland, uh, the word is narut, nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in other uh, countries, you get uh, the, the, the word folk in various versions. So the this idea of colonization, of Western corporations also taking part in it, where the world government taking part in this, makes it possible for people who are otherwise quite isolated, because they're nationalists in their various contexts, mm -hmm. to collaborate very um, effectively, mm -hmm. because they are playing on the same fears and on the same resentments in various locations. Thank you. Maybe we should explain uh, the abbreviation peace. Peace. Right. Uh, peace <laughs> is the uh, nothing to do with peace. It's actually mm -hmm, a very right. uh, warlike mm -hmm. uh, um, party. It's a p political party in Poland. Uh, peace is short for uh, Prawo i Sprawiedliwość, um, the law and justice. And mm -hmm. it is Poland's populist party. I guess the the leader uh, uh, Kaczyński uh, is is the Polish equivalent of Orban. And um, we actually believe that uh, for the first time in, in decades, uh, speaking from the, the the position of observers of. 
Polish political developments, we have something of interest to say to people in the West because we've been there. You're only going there. The, the spread of right-wing populism, like we really know things that <laughs> Americans are only beginning to intuit. Mm, like, like the fact that uh, this is something that I found uh, difficult to explain to American feminists even l last year, but now they're getting it. Um, the fact that contemporary extreme right-wingers are no longer neoliberals. They're not they, they don't love capitalism like they used to. Like, if you were following the, 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 the right wing in the 80s, you know, these were people who were for Reaganomics. They thought um, uh, feminism was like communism. But now it's more like genderism is like the transnational capitalist uh, conspiracy. The, the alliances have shifted. And in Poland, they shifted a little earlier because, you know, the, this populist wave really started like five years ago in Poland. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to ask um, about uh, how do you see this paper, your presentation, your paper, fitting in or addressing the themes, uh, the general themes of the conference? Well, I think that we, I've met the researchers mm -hmm. who are uh, participating before in similar contexts, and I think the war on gender is right at the center of this new um, alignment of political forces in Europe around the ideas of gender, secularism, liberalism. And perhaps more than others at this conference, I'm going to insist that anti-genderism is not really about gender. It's about dismantling liberal democracy. In other words, gender is only the, lang the new language of anti-liberalism, mm -hmm. uh, much like I think anti-Semitism was before World War II. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a new enemy, and there are a lot of, com there are a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. thank you. Uh, and also, additionally, uh, how do you see your work more broadly engaging in these themes? Well, I, th I see my work as part of the transnational feminist effort to understand what is going on in regard to gender. And I think uh, until quite recently, the, the main paradigm in feminism has been one of progress. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are more minorities are joining, feminism is becoming, is forgo for, almost forget, forgotten its homophobic and racist past. We're all in this together as the Rainbow Coalition, people, gay people are getting married. And, you know, and suddenly you have this huge grassroots movement all around Europe and increasingly, I think, in the United States mm -hmm. against these phenomena. And so, I, I see myself as someone aligned with the skeptical feminists who have been saying, not so fast, you know, mm -hmm. we have to watch mm -hmm. who is on the other side. I am uh, very much inspired, for instance, by Nancy Fraser's work. And I know it's been extremely um, controversial in the States, and I've followed these debates. But I think her um, seminal article um, published, I think, in 2007 or 2009, uh, Feminism, Capitalism, and the Cunning of History, is, is, is an absolutely crucial text, uh, which, which, which should be read by, by feminist scholars everywhere, because it makes us aware that feminism is not this isolated cultural phenomenon, but it's part of world politics. And world politics are not going in the direction that you know feminist scholars envisioned in the 90s. So, um, so yeah, I see, I see myself as a kind of... Um, I guess the, the the pessimist from Eastern Europe warning Western Europeans not to believe in, you know, in, the, in progress so much, and yeah. and to really follow closely the alliances between nationalism and religious fundamentalist. I'm also an Americanist. This is my primary field, and uh, my ambition and the way this this project is is going to go, hopefully, is to look very closely at the American connection. In fact, anti-genderism probably started with a book called The Gender Agenda by um, Dale O'Leary, um, an American right-wing journalist in the 90s. So interestingly, what, what seems to be a Catholic, a Catholic phenomenon um, coming from Europe right. is actually mm -hmm. an ultra-Orthodox uh, Catholic phenomenon coming from the United States. It's American anti-feminists that made the Pope in the mid-90s uh, look at the word gender and question its place in international documents. So, mm -hmm. um, so Yes, I think that, that Eastern Europe is just a particularly interesting and, and frightening place to look at these phenomena from because they are just more pronounced and, and maybe they started a little earlier in our okay. part of the world. Okay. So what do you think, what do you hope or worry is going to happen uh, in the future, both in Eastern Europe and here in America? <laughs> 
Well, you know, let, I'm, I'm an optimist uh, in, in my everyday life, so I always end interviews on, you know, on a happy note, you know, this has got to go away. <laughs> but increasingly, That's I'm not so sure. I think, you know, uh, Polish feminists have this joke that, you know, either feminism is, that, that patriarchy is a short break in the long history of, um, of patriarchy, or else patriarchy was a short break in the history of matriarchy. <laughs> and I, I'm, and I'm afraid that the, second, the first scenario may be the case. In other words, you know, 20 years from now, we will remember the, the Polish 90s as this wonderful moment when feminists could, could speak up. But we will be, you know, reading those memoirs in prison or something. And so, so you know, this is the not so funny scenario. I, I really think we are at the brink of a new era, and that mm -hmm. democracy is not going to be central to it, and certainly not not liberal democracy, but a new populist version of democracy. And and anti-feminism, anti-gay um, rights discourse, I think is not only going to be central to that new paradigm, unfortunately, but it will also help bring it about. Mm -hmm. because, this, because gender has become the new language of uh, class resentment. Mm -hmm. Telling people that they need to protect their children against um, genderists is making these people join nationalist movements. It's not only the promise that those mm -hmm. children will be protected, but it's also, so, so basically, anti-genderism is a powerful mobilizing tool for right-wing populists. And um, I'm quite uh, pessimistic about our, uh, and I'm thinking of the liberal left and feminist left, um, capacity to counteract this. Mm -hmm. At least now, it's not happening. Right. And uh, how do you see your own work evolving in, in, in this direction or in the general trend? Yes, I'm, I, I see myself going to the United States in the next few years and mm -hmm. actually looking much more closely at the American connection in all this, because mm -hmm. this is not a European phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a global phenomenon. It's a transnational phenomenon with very strong links to Putin's Russia. And, uh, you know, the, the conspiracy theory version of our looking at anti-genderism includes, you know, that it's actually a plot of Putin too. Right. But I don't think, you know, these things happen as plots, they happen as trends. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, you know, I hope someone is doing the research in Russia. I want to do the research in the United States. I want to look at American versions of anti-genderism, which are quite different because they're no longer focused on homophobia. Mm -hmm. they're, fo they're very much uh, anti-choice. I think the uh, anti-choice <laughs> movement is really gaining force here. They've abandoned the uh, homophobic cause because of the gay marriage thing. I think that's that's basically done, but they've taken up the um, uh, anti-trans agenda very strongly, and I want to look at, you know, to what extent they're communicating, mm -hmm. and to what extent they are also in touch with uh, um, the the, the so-called hipster right, the mm -hmm. the Breitbart right. Like, mm -hmm. right. what are the alliances here? Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. So, um, so to kind of conclude and wrap up our conversation, maybe you could uh, give us some reading recommendations uh, for those interested in, in learning more mm -hmm. and becoming okay, more I will, knowledgeable. <laughs> I will suggest uh, mm -hmm. three older texts that mm -hmm. are easily accessible and, and very informative. Um, one is Judith Butler's uh, 2004 book, which, which at the time seemed quite odd to me when I read it, and now I think of it as prophetic. Um, it's, called, um, uh, the, uh, it's called Undoing Gender, and particularly the essay The End of Sexual Difference. And she was basically taking on the beginning of what has now evolved into the war on gender in very interesting ways. Then there's the article by uh, Fraser that I've mentioned already, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, Feminism, Capitalism, and the Cunning of History, and uh, Mary Ann Case's um, article, After Gender, the Destruction of Man, the Vatican's Nightmare Vision of the Gender Agenda for Law. This was in Pace Law uh, Review, published in 2011. Mm -hmm. Very interesting study of how the church actually constructs gender you know, from the other side. Mm -hmm. um, but I would also recommend a book which is about to come out, which is a collective work of uh, these scholars that are looking at anti-genderism in Europe. It's um, um, uh, edited by David Paternada and uh, Roman Kuhar, and it's called Anti-Gender Campaigns in Europe, uh, Mobilizing Against Equality. And it's about to come out. I've just looked at the proofs. Mm -hmm. And there's some fascinating case studies. So mm -hmm. this, this, if you really want to understand the different versions, that's the book to look at. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.